Hey, what's up everybody? If you're new to the channel, my name is Jonathan Casey. Welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. Today, we're gonna be comparing the 2016 iPhone SE to the 2020 iPhone SE. And I'm pretty excited about this video. I mean, I'm sure most of you know which phone is going to come out on top, but I think it would be kind of cool to take a step back and just see how far Apple has progressed in all of the improvements they've made in four years when you consider it's been four years since we've seen an iPhone SE. So let's go ahead and kick off this video. The original iPhone SE came out in 2016 and was priced at $399 for the 16 gigabyte model and $499 for the 64 gigabyte model. Currently, you can pick up the 2016 SE for under 100 bucks, depending on where you're looking. It features the same design as the iPhone 5, which in my opinion is one of the best looking iPhone designs to date. On the front, we have a four inch 640p display, a physical home button with touch ID, and then a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera. But you know, that was the old and this is the new. This is the 2020 iPhone SE in product red. It retails for 399 bucks for the 64 gigabyte model, 449 for the 128 and 549 for the 256. The 2020 SE uses the same body as the iPhone 8. In my opinion, it's not as striking as the iPhone 5 design, but it's still a great looking phone. The display is technically a 720p panel, but to be exact, it's like 750. Also on the front, you will find a home button with the latest version of Touch ID. And as for the front facing camera, well, it's seven megapixels. In the hand, the first thing I noticed was the overall size. The 2016 iPhone SE just feels really tiny. However, I think it feels more premium than the 2020 iPhone SE. I love the boxier design in the chamfered edges of the 2016 model. The 2020 is much more rounded without the sharp edges of the 2016. The glass back, while not my favorite, it still does provide a premium feel. The 2020 model also comes with an IP67 rating, making it dust and water resistant. The 2016 is thicker, but because of that thickness, you do get a flush camera bump whereas the 2020 model has a small bump on the backside. No biggie, but something worth pointing out. Speaking of cameras, the original iPhone SE has a 12 megapixel camera that's capable of recording 4K video up to 30 frames per second. The 2020 SE features a 12 megapixel camera as well, but it's capable of recording 4K video up to 60 frames per second. The screen difference is the first thing that I think anybody is going to notice. Not only is the 2020 iPhone SE a bit bigger, but it's also quite a bit nicer despite having the same exact DPI. Brightness, color accuracy, color shift, and sharpness have all been improved. Even when scrolling pages and swiping from side to side, I feel like the experience is a little bit smoother on the SE2. Thanks to the glass back on the SE2, you do get wireless charging, which is quite impressive to see on an iPhone under $400. It may not be the fastest wireless charging around, but nonetheless, it is a feature I would have never expected Apple to put on a phone with this kind of price tag. Another physical difference is the SE2 features the latest version of Touch ID versus the old version on the 2016 model. In terms of speed, they're both about the same, but the 2020 SE is a little bit more accurate. Staying on the home button, I think the biggest difference is that the 2016 SE uses a clickable home button. Here's a quick listen so you can hear yourself. In comparison, the 2020 model uses a haptic engine to simulate a press just like we saw on the iPhone 8. And here's a quick listen to that one. This may come as a surprise, but I prefer the simulated home button press on the 2020 SE versus the clickable home button on the iPhone SE uh, 2016. I'm not really sure why, but I definitely do. 
Uh, the haptic feedback on the 2020 SE is also much better than the 2016 model. The iPhone SE features stereo speakers and spatial audio playback versus the 2016 model, which features a single speaker on the bottom. The difference is mind blowing to be honest. Like they sound way different and the SE 2020 is much, much better. Here's a quick listen for yourself. The 2016 SE does have that headphone jack, so that could make up for the speakers, depending on who you're asking. The jump from the A9 to the A13 is pretty huge. Looking at the benchmarks alone, you can see exactly what I mean. The question is, does all of that power translate to real world use? Well, yes and no. I'm gonna go ahead and play Into the Dead 2 on the iPhone SE from 2016. It loaded up fairly quick, um, but I know the 2020 model is going to load it much faster. Go ahead and get started on this game right here. Turn up the volume. That way you guys can hear a little something, something. And uh, give it time to load. I mean, the experience is definitely not bad in any way. Do wish we could get some sound, though. Uh, there we go. Oh. All right. No, I mean, it's it's doing good. I mean, this isn't the most graphical game by any means, but I think the experience is, is fine. For a four-year-old phone, it's doing just fine. And once again, we got no sound. So there we go. Yeah, I mean, it might be a little bit smoother, but it's definitely not really noticeable. At least when it comes to this game. Other than the fact that the screen is bigger, it's easier to, you know, control the guy and, and actually play. I can't really notice a difference in the overall gaming performance. Running the Antutu benchmark really shows the difference between these two chips. The A13 is a great chip, regardless if it's being throttled or not. The A9 at that time was an excellent chip, but given that this is a four generation leap, the A13 is just definitely going to perform night and day better than the A9. The difference in RAM between these two is only one gigabyte, but honestly, I believe you will see a difference, especially if you like to leave a lot of apps open in the background and then switch between them. Also, the 2020 SE can open apps much faster, but I don't know if this is a big deal to you or not. I just wanted to let you know. One thing I was interested in testing as soon as I received my SE2 was the network and Wi-Fi performance to see if the antennas have been upgraded from the 2016 model to the 2020 model. So we're gonna go ahead and run a speed test using the SpeedCheck app to show you both phones are connected to the same exact Wi-Fi network. Cellular is shut off and there is no SIM card inserted in each of these phones. So we're gonna go ahead and run the speed check at the same exact time and take a look at the performance of each of these because I am thinking that the 2020 iPhone SE is going to perform much better versus the 2016 model, which it appears that way. It appears to be doing double the speed in terms of download. Go ahead and look at the upload and it's pretty much the same. Actually, the SE from 2016 is performing a little bit better on the upload, which I don't think the upload speeds have anything to do with the antennas inside of these phones. I think that's just my provider because I'm using Spectrum and it's not the best service. Battery life is something that I really can't share with you right now. First of all, I just received my iPhone SE 2 and I also have a 2016 iPhone SE currently that has 90% capacity remaining on the battery health report. So it's not gonna give me an accurate representation. What I can tell you are the battery sizes and my prediction. 
The 2016 SE has a 1,624 million power battery, while the 2020 SE has a 1,821 million power battery. According to Apple, both phones will offer 13 hours of video playback, but the 2016 SE will get you 50 hours of audio playback versus the 2020 model. Of course, these are company numbers, and in the real world, things can be much, much different. I'll update you in my full review with my personal experience, so stay tuned and subscribe for that video. I'm assuming despite the 2020 SE having a bigger display and beefier processor, it's still gonna get like around an hour to an hour and a half extra use versus the 2016 SE. When it comes to the software on both phones, they're running the latest version of iOS, which is really impressive given how old the original SE is. Both phones support a lot of the same features given the fact that they are running identical software versions. But I think the biggest thing to take note here is that if you're big into firmware updates and receiving various new features, then you're gonna get a lot of life out of the 2020 SE. I will say due to the superior internals on the 2020 iPhone SE, iOS does run a little bit better and smoother, but that's to be expected. Uh, one thing that's cool to see on both phones is Apple Pay. I mean, it's a given on the 2020 model, but having it on the 2016 model was a bit of a surprise. All right, let's explore the cameras for a minute. Uh, the 2020 iPhone SE is able to utilize portrait mode as long as it can detect a face, whereas the 2016 variant does not have portrait mode at all. Uh, the 2020 iPhone SE is the obvious winner when it comes to quality, no matter the scenario or conditions, but it's still cool to see how impressive the original iPhone SE is, despite it being four years old. Uh, there's been a lot of camera improvements in four years, and this still hangs with the best of them. I think it's kind of cool. Go ahead and take a look at the rest of these samples and let me know what you think down in the comment section. Obviously, the point of this comparison is not to persuade you to buy the iPhone SE from 2016, but rather show you how much Apple has improved in four years. Some may argue, but I think Apple did a damn good job. If you've been using an iPhone SE, now is your chance to get a refreshed experience, more powerful internals, and a much, much better camera. And the best thing is you could do it without having to empty your pockets. You're gonna pay that price that you loved paying for your original SE. But what do you think? 2016 to 2020, did Apple do a good job? Sound off down below in the comment section. Stay tuned for more 2020 SE content. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and do it now. Make sure to click that bell icon for good measure. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and I will talk to you fine people in the next video.